On this episode of The Fisherman TV, she's one serious offshore angler. Whether she's running the boat or working a big fish to the boat, she can handle it all. Oh yeah, and she's no slouch with a knife either. Sorry guys, this catch has been caught. Kirk Fay, offshore reporter for The Fisherman Magazine, and his wife Gina are the tuna twosome. This unique husband and wife team share the same passion for sport fishing. You're watching The Fisherman TV, brought to you by Yo Zori. Yes! 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 <laughs> My love for offshore has to start with my obsession with mahi. I mean, I just love, I don't think there's a better looking fish in the ocean. And, um, you know, when you're inshore and you're reading reports of guys out there catching, you know, fish two, three hundred pounds, it, it, you definitely want to get out there and, and, and join what they're doing. And once that rod screams for the first time, you're hooked. Just recently, I've taken over for John Raguso, who uh, for many years did a great job um, doing the offshore reports. He's actually been a big help. Um, really kind of showing me how it, it, it's done. I do believe he's still going to be doing the boating and the electronics reviews. I had grown up fishing with my dad here and there, uh, but I really started enjoying it and getting good at it once I met Kirk and we, we started doing that as we were dating. Kirk and I met on a trading floor. We both worked at Citigroup and uh, we were friends for a couple of years and then uh, he convinced me to go out on a date with him and happily ever after. Fish on! Fish on! Grab it! You can probably go a little tight on the track. Easy. Alright. I gotta see where that happened. Where that, um... I don't know, it was a crazy explosion at the top. At first I thought it was a white ball. Nice. Feels nice. Yeah, you know. Look, look. How are you holding up? I know, just hang in there. Just hang in there. I mean you got a lot of line back. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little forward now, all right? Yeah. I don't wanna plus these other ones up top and yep, yep, get them out. First fish that hit the line made it zing. He, uh, he pulled and he pulled, he took a lot of line and he made me work hard and I could tell when I was reeling him that this was the biggest tuna I've ever been reeling in. Now he's going to look to go under the boat so be careful. We got him to the boat and we saw him and he looked at us and he spit the hook and uh, that, that's a tough one to swallow. She did a great job, absolutely nothing wrong and just as I was about to get an, a decent gaff shot, he spits the hook, there he goes and um, yeah it hurts, it hurts but you know what you do and you normally we kind of pat each other on the, the rear and say let's get the lines out. We're, we're great friends and we're, we're a great team and you know this is something we love doing together. We know how to anticipate each other's moves and what he needs, what I need and um, you know we go out there, we have fun and it, it makes for a great experience. I, I'll take her out there over any guy that I fish with because we just have that chemistry, we work together and it's great, it's fantastic. Gina's actually really good at picking out the lures but I'll actually be the one who picks out the colors. If the sun's shining, it's nice to have a dark spread out there. 
If it's cloudy out, it's nice to have a bright spread out there. As far as speed goes, you definitely want to see how the lures are sitting in the water. Um, for me, it seems to work about maybe, you know, anywhere between, I would say like six and a half knots um, to seven knots. Um, that seems to be the speed where I pick up fish, but if you're not picking up fish and other boats are, you know, you gotta change something. They're doing something that you're not. And just adjust and make sure you move your spread around so that they, they wanna swim correctly um, on, on the wake of the wave. And it's very important. There we go, right back at it. Uh, Oh boy. I don't easy, 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 big fella. Uh, uh, this is a big fish. You know, with the, with the second fish, it, it's all about being positive. And, and you know, we lost the first fish, and we didn't even get the spread back in the water. And here comes wow. another fish, and, and there we are. We were on, we were on, and, and he was peeling, and we were trying to get the lines up as quickly as possible. I need a belt, all right? Yeah. Get me the belt first. Bring them up again. Oh man, I need some. Keep going. Good, she's good. Right, like four, I'll take this fish there. It was a nice fish and, and, and the fight was on and, and we got it to the boat and you know we, we switched off me, me and Gina and uh, I, it, it took me one or two times but I finally got the gaff in him and, and yeah you know what a great day. He's so passionate and he gets so excited that sometimes uh, he doesn't learn to, to take his time and relax and really assess the situation. And uh, if he could do that, he would be even that much better of a fisherman. You know, that's, that's a big problem with me. I'm very, you know, when, when that fish is coming and everything, you can't go at it gaffing, kind of like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. You really need to have confidence because no one else is going to do it for you. So, you, you know, you try and it, it's not so easy to hit a moving target. And I was a big 60 pound fish and everything. I'm not the biggest guy in the world. But after a few times and everything, he does his thing and the gas goes in him. And, and when he just gets over that gunnel, then you could celebrate. And uh, what a great day. One of the things about offshore fishing is that you never know when an opportunity is going to present itself. You may be heading offshore for a day of sharking, trolling for tuna, or chucking in the canyon. But a lot of my great catches have come either heading out or heading back from the fishing grounds. For that effect, I always have a couple of rods rigged and ready to go. Most people will find that spinning rods are the easiest to use. I prefer a bait casting rod like this one here because it gives me a little bit more strength, it's a little bit beefier, a little bit more line capacity, and with the revolving spool, I can control a 60 or 80 pound tuna when it takes off for the horizon. Some of the lures that you might use, Yozuri makes a bunch of really interesting ones, darters, minnows, poppers, and things like that. But one of the most important things to do when you're setting up your rig is you wanna have some sort of a fluorocarbon material because the water's really clear out there and the fish can see everything, trust me. So I've had my best luck with some of the Yozuri pink 
fluorocarbon material, it literally does melt into the water. So once again, spinning rod, bait casting rod, whatever, it's all good. Just be ready to go when the moment presents itself. All you're doing when you're trolling out there, you, you are looking. You're looking for any single sign you could find, whether they're, they're you know, small birds, whether you, you got, you know, dolphins. Go over to the dolphins immediately. You got whales, go to them. Draggers, it's fantastic. Always fish around draggers. Um, what they're pulling up, what they're dumping off their boat, I mean, that's what fish feed on. And if you keep on going around, and if they're a fish there, there's a very good chance they're going to be there. And you, you just keep looking at anything floating. Anything floating, you want to go look. There's possibly there's mahi under there because there's all the bait there for them. Oh, mahi, mahi, you got it. Take him, take him. He's still on. He's still on. Yeah, he's still on. I can see the line running. There you go. Look how cool he is. Oh my god, he's so pretty. We're just going to hoist him right in. Yep. Step back. Stay, keep, keep him in the water. Oh, keep him in the water. Awesome. Look at him. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> One of Kirk's favorite things about fishing with me is that I help keep the boat nice and neat. I think it's very important to keep a clean ship when, uh, when things get chaotic, when we're trying to land a fish. Uh, it's a nice thing not to have other hooks and lures flying around and it, it makes for a much smoother process and uh, less accidents can occur that way. So one of the things I do when I'm on, on board is definitely try to tidy up. I'm absolutely obsessed with mahi. There's just something about them that maybe it just puts me in a different spot. I always think I'm in the Caribbean when I see them. They're just, you don't know whether they come to the boat, whether they're gonna be green or blue. We're gonna go over everything else. Good, good. Gotta go. They're acrobatic and they're colorful. They're so beautiful. Um, and sometimes they're difficult to catch. So when we do get those in the boat, um, we're rewarded by, you know, a beautiful fish and, you know, a hard fish to catch sometimes. To be able to see dolphin in their own environment doing their thing and being playful with us and, you know, following us around. And it, it's, it's really, really cool. That's the second best part versus actually catching fish. I am the queen of filleting fish. I, uh, I take my time and I do a very thorough job. She is so meticulous in, in, in cleaning the fish. She leaves no, no meat. You could almost see through the fish. She does an incredible job. She takes her time. I'm really not allowed to go near the fish because I just butcher it and, you know, she calls me an animal and everything. And, you know, it, it, here's another part of teamwork. She starts cleaning the fish, I start cleaning the boat. We're done at the same time, our day's over. I feel very lucky that Kirk and I both enjoy the same thing uh, and we get to go fishing together and, and work as a team and really enjoy our company. I can't explain it how great it is to have a wife that goes out there and really enjoys it. I could see that she gets so excited, especially when we're offshore, when the reel just starts just burning. But I, I actually think, you know, she's such a good person that she sees the excitement in me and she wants to be around that. I mean, I gotta be honest, this is when I'm at my happiest and she wants to be that. She doesn't want to see grumpy Kirk. She wants to see excited Kirk and, and it just works.